Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about Azure Sphere and how one can connect the Azure Sphere device with IoT Central. My name is Riju and I work in Microsoft as a cloud solution architect. So many of you know that Azure Sphere is a highly secure IoT device. It's the device which comes with a secure operating system and security built into the hardware. And then we have got supported Azure Sphere security service to help you identify the device and then do the necessary steps to ensure that it is highly secure. And for development purpose, you have got Visual Studio tools for Azure Sphere. Now, this is a very simple device as per the picture. And here is a small video of the device I'm using right now. And this device has got a couple of, you can see that chip and the pin to extend it. And then also at the back side, you have an option to put a battery. So just in case you don't want to power it using the USB cable, you can use the battery to power it. And this is from the company called Seed and the device is MT3620. All right, so let's see how we can use this device, connect it, and then provision it with the IoT Central. So for that, let me first start with something you need first in this machine, is that you need the Visual Studio tools for Azure Sphere. So if you just go ahead, say uh, Azure Sphere, tools for Visual Studio, and search it, it will come up with the device and setup instruction. If you go a little down, you will find the download uh, Azure Sphere SDK preview for Visual Studio. This works with both Visual Studio 2017 and Visual Studio 2019. Either you can use the Community Edition, which is free, or the Enterprise Edition, which is paid. Now, I already have the Visual Studio and this tool installed. What I can do now, once you install this, connect the device and just to make sure that device is connected and identified by your uh, machine, you can go to the device manager of your um, machine where the device is connected physically and go inside the port. It should show you three ports like COM1011 and COM8. If these three are coming, then your device is properly connected. In fact, if you see the documentation, it says exactly the same. So it identifies these three things and tells you that it will only work only when these three things comes up in the uh, device manager. So far, so good. Now we go to the uh, list of application and I go into the A section and once you download the Visual Studio tools, this also installs the CLI for that. So let us open CLI. And let us increase the font size. Let's keep it this way. And then if you say Azure Sphere, and just put Enter, it will show you that uh, options available. So you have 20 different options. You have got option for SKU, login, tenant, device, etc., etc. So we'll begin with the device because we want to make sure the hardware is up to date. So just to check the if the hardware is up to date, what you can do, you can just run this and say device and if you do that, it will also give you the further list of commands. Now one of the commands for the device is show OTA status. So if I say show OTA status, then it will tell me the device operating system currently. So it is showing the current version of the operating system is 19.07, which is the latest one. I don't have to update the operating system. But just in case you are running uh, with a lower version, you can always type something like recover and this will start downloading the new operating system, whatever the latest operating system is, 
and flush this device with the new operating system. Pretty easy. I've done that, so it's the latest version. I am not going to do it, otherwise it will take a bit longer time. But just in case, for the sake of curiosity, if I do it, it'll redo the same thing and it'll just update the same operating system. And uh, just to wait that it is start, it is downloading, uh, we can just wait for the, the notification to happen and then we will go back to our Azure IoT Central and create a location for this deployment. So it is just flashing the device and then once the device is flashed so it will start uh, sending the image one of 16 so which means it is it's going fine so we'll just let this thing happen uh, while we go back to this and I say IOT central if I type that and then search engine pops up this IOT central I go ahead and open the IOT central I say get started it basically will show me this dashboard and I'm already using my credential so I can now go ahead and create a new application so what I can do just I can say that I want to create an application and I can either go with a trial free free trial for seven days no subscription required which is pretty cool you don't have to provide any credit card or anything of that sort or you can go with a pay as you go and then you can choose any of the application templates so let's pick up the sample dev kit and then instead of this name what I just want to um, give as Azure Sphere that's the name I want to put and here also I want to put this and after that I'm gonna choose the tenant I belong to and the subscription I have got access to and um, let me put WG and probably I will have to provide the smaller letters which is good so I right now can click on create and this will provision my application which means it will deploy a few other IOT services in Azure for me and make it ready for me to just enroll the device and start working on it while it is doing so what I can just do that I can go back to the command prompt and see the status so all the images have been applied uh, and then it will start rebooting the device once the reboot is successful it will tell me the device ID that's the unique identification of the device as a maker of the device um, the company who creates this chip knows this ID and this ID is the identification for the device uh, wherever you use it now as we go back to the device command prompt let's see a couple of options now you can see here in that it allows you to configure a few things like Wi-Fi if you want to uh, have the device connected to a machine where you need the internet uh, you definitely need Wi-Fi um, so or if I go back to the previous command prompt I will be able to now log in this device to a tenant now if I say Azure Sphere login this will prompt me to log in using my credential and once I log into uh, the using the credential I am I'm having I will be able to now get to see the list of um, tenants I can attach this device to now you can see that uh, it shows something at the bottom that selected Azure Sphere tenant is this and it will be retained uh, so you can choose any other tenant if you want to uh, add it to the to the tenant and these are the tenant basically within the same um, tenant people might have created hence I have got uh, automatic uh, access to this 181 tenants available otherwise if you just go ahead with the command let's say tenant let me just put it a little up so that this is visible so if I say tenant and then if I just run it 
and I say list what you tenant help oh it doesn't really show any value it's all right so let me just go ahead and then claim the device now if I say Azure Sphere login and then if I just use this uh, option called claim so I'll just like to show you that um, in the Sphere dev claim now let's just show you the list of thing and then one of the thing is claim what it says that it claim a previously unclaimed device in your Azure Sphere tenant so let's claim that so I'll say claim and it will start adding the device into the tenant and it will tell me that hey this device ID is kind of added to the tenant this tenant with ID this okay so I am good at this point in time so I have logged in got this device attached to the tenant everything is kind of secure now coming to the next part I will be using this Azure IoT Central and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go to the administration first of all I just would like to create a device template because I just use the existing one that doesn't have us Azure Sphere device template so what I'm going to do is just um, say uh, a z sphere deputy maybe and I say create that is created and I'll just leave it like that so nothing much I want to do with this I go to dashboard devices and then I say Azure Sphere I want to get rid of this okay and then I say I want to add this real device not the simulated one so the moment I say real device it asks me a device ID now remember that in the claim option it showed me a device ID okay but this is uh, kind of like a capital one so let's So let me just copy it, paste it so everything is lower, looks fine. So I will come back and use this as the ID of the device. So you can just give a device name as you want and I say create. So a new device is kind of created. So far so good. Now in the, in the world of this, I'm still not connected with the device actual device so if you see the device connection here it allows me to uh, add the device either by a shared access signature or certificate now because Azure Sphere is highly secure it always demands that you use the certificate okay so what I'm going to basically do, I'm going to go back to the command prompt. Let me close few additional windows uh, and then let me go back to the command prompt here and run few commands. Now before I run few command, I also would like to um, configure the Wi-Fi. So let me do that at this point in time. Okay, so I have got a Wi-Fi connection. Now, to check the status of the Wi-Fi, remember that Wi-Fi is under device, okay, manage device. So I have to go with this, and I say Wi-Fi, and I say list. So it'll show me all the Wi-Fi if there is anything connected. So right now, no Wi-Fi is connected. So I can just put a help and to see how the Wi-Fi connection can be added. So it has an option called add, and then I can just add the Wi-Fi using say add 
and it will have two parameters minor bit one is s that is ssid of that and then k is the key so while i'm doing that so i'll say s and i'm gonna just add it in uh, now i've just added the wi-fi i have added it because i was typing the the wi-fi password in the screen so i paused it and I've added the Wi-Fi, you can see that now it's showing up the Wi-Fi list pretty well, okay? Then, what I need to do is now I need to generate a certificate and pass this certificate to this. So let me see the, the Azure Sphere. Tenant. And then, in the tenant, you can see that it has two options, download CS certificate and download validate certificate. So let me do one thing. Let me create a folder in the, in the directory called D. Let's say I put it inside D. And then I say mkdir uh, temp v. That will create the temp directory and then I go inside the temp v. What I can do now, I can run this tenant certificate creation. So one of the uh, operations is download CA certificate. If I just paste it and then say help, it will tell me what all parameters it needs. One is the output. Now, in the output, it says that downloaded certificate must have .cer extension. So when you give the name of the certificate, uh, using O or dash dash output, you say CA cert .cer. So it will be downloading the certificate in that folder. And then if I say ls, you will be able to see that uh, CA cert cer is created. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open that location that is D temp VR V CSR. And once I add the certificate, notice here a few things happens. It doesn't really believe this certificate. So it says that need verification. Okay. So I go ahead and then click on this icon. It says view certificate details and verify. I click on that, a pop-up window comes up. And this pop-up window tells me a few things, that the certificate I have downloaded from the tenant and uploaded in IoT Central, and then it needs me to have a validation code. So let's generate the validation code. This will generate a code, some, some code over here. I just copy the code. And if I go back to the screen and I say, um, tenant again in that one of the thing is download validation certificate and this basically downloads the validation certificate for the current Azure Sphere tenant and provide the code as x509 in .cr file so let's do that so I will use the download CS certificate right so the saving the certificate to the folder and if I just say ls and it will show you vcert.cr. Now what I want to do is that I want to click on verify and then I pick up the vcert which I created and everything is fine. You can see now the green checkbox is showed up which means now it is okay to have the connection. Now understand this, unlike the other IoT devices where you have got an IoT uh, hub connection string, which is pretty much a human readable string with a couple of characters, goes into the chip. Now people trying to access or hack the machine will be able to read easily without any trouble. This is complex because this first need the, the authentication to be able to log into the tenant. Once you log into the tenant, the certificate comes up and that's not enough. You just need another certificate to also come from that based on the verification code. 
So it's a sort of like a handshake between the IoT hub and the device. And that handshake, once it is successful, you will be able to now work using this device. Now, if I go ahead and say um, this, and if I say tenant show selected, and then it shows that the Azure Sphere tenant ID where I am kind of connected, that's the ID. And then I can also see that this basically has got the, all the certificate and everything in place from the IoT Central. Now pretty good to go. Now I'll be able to now deploy the code and then push the data back to the IoT Central and then be able to see things from the dashboard if I am going to get the device. Let's say I pick up the device I'm working right now at this point in time. And if I'm sending some data, let's say by putting some code into that device, it will start showing up into this dashboard. So that's how you connect the Azure Sphere uh, quite securely. Now let me walk you through a few of the commands here. All right, so let's just go to the Azure Sphere um, device. And then you, sh you see one of the command is prep debug. Now, oftentimes, you, if you use Visual Studio, you would like to de deploy the code and debug. Now, if you don't do this command in your device, your Visual Studio code will not be deployed into the uh, device. So let's try to pick up um, the Visual Studio code from GitHub, available by Microsoft, and then try to deploy that. So if you go into that um, search, I just want you to find out by yourself that hence I'm not putting any um, code over here, but if you just type Azure Sphere, Sphere GitHub sample, it basically picks up the Azure Sphere samples from GitHub. You just need to go here and download the sample and it will have sample, hardware, uh, all this stuff. So if you go to the samples, you will find various different samples. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use this Azure IoT sample. Okay. So basically this sample has got a, a solution, a Visual Studio solution. Uh, it's a uh, solution which can be deployed into uh, into device. Let's see how we can do that. Let's pick up this code. Okay, and I will pick up this code which is already downloaded in my machine. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use one small utility to find few information to be added in this. Now, one of the things it will ask you when you do it for the first time is that what is the tenant ID? So the tenant ID will be the tenant ID here. So it will have the same tenant ID. It's 800. So let's just pick it up. Yep. And then it will also ask you to have this. Now, how do you find all of them? This basically gives you a um, so let's first pick up the location and then I go to this tools. I go to this as a command prompt and I run this exe called show IoT central config. So if I say show IoT central config, it asks me to log in. So I just go ahead and log in using the same credential which I used to log in the IoT Central. And if I go ahead and do that, it shows me three projects. So we just skip this part. So let's try doing it again. And I should be able to select the 
the option called Azure Sphere that is three. I will let me try doing it over here um, in a different window. Maybe it's going too fast. Tools, pick up the path, come over here and say CD and go to this path and then yeah login wait yep and then I say three so it will get me all the details. So in fact, it says, because I'm running the sample and then the tool belongs to the same sample, it says how to do the configuration. So it says that you, in the command org, you need to copy this. Let's put it in a notepad. This will be the command org. And then you can see this value is showing up. So let's pick up the value as well. And I just pick it up like this. Okay, no good. So you have a tenant ID, that's it. So you already have the global ledger device provisioning.net that is part of this. So I'll go back to Visual Studio and it is there and let me replace this and paste it. Okay, and let me copy the whole thing and paste it and I pick up this one and put it in the command arc. Looks fine. Save it and here we go. Now you can see remote debugger. Now if I do F5, this will fail. No, it is not because I probably have tried that. The oh, device did fail. Okay, so you can see the device could not, this is an interesting message, device would not stage app or sideload image not trusted by the device, application deployment cap capability is required. So even if the device is locally connected with the Visual Studio and I've got all the logins, all the access, still it is not trusted. What I need to do is over here, run, Azure Sphere device and then I need to run prep debug. If I do prep debug, you know all of you know side loading, so that's uh, phone application development and it says that yeah I'm kind of downloading that, configuring it, making it kind of side load enabled. Uh, because I'm now doing the development. If let's say you want to um, want to make it a field ready, which means that nobody can side load it, you just say prep failed. That will basically, so this is the command. So that will basically make sure that device uh, doesn't allow anybody to load any unsigned uh, application which is under development, right? Now once this kind of kind of configured, I should be able to run F5 in my Visual Studio and then code should go in, in the device. So let's just wait for a few moment while it is trying to download and then configure. while the deployment is happening what we can do we just we can browse through a couple of samples also available so it has got samples folder and in the samples folder you have got all the hello world iot and all sort of different 
kind of application which you can go and explore by yourself right and then if you go to the top root folder it also comes up with the documentation and the documentation gives you the further link to the official documentation on how to get started how to def uh, set up your uh, development kit for the PC for development installation quick starts etc etc so this is quite interesting uh, github so repo and once this is kind of uh, yep done what we can do we can try deploying this into visual studio now you can see that there is no error and the side loading started and it will start showing you the code now if I press the button yeah it shows that button is pressed because that's a code which is written inside the solution explorer if you go back into this you will find the code written and then if I just keep pressing the button it will keep playing that button press is kind of true and uh, if I want to capture this event in the IoT Hub I need to modify the template which I am using which I will be uh, explaining in the later video how you can uh, put the code which we have done and then start capturing the event from the IoT Center. With this I want to end this thank you so much for watching it